And now we have the main event. After fucking, it feels like... Uh, this was disappointing, man. Yeah, it was. It was. I will say, it was a good match, but I expected a lot more. Yeah. CM Punk, Hangman Page, AEW World Championship match. The just, crowd was... Just, say, into, just the, say who won, because I really don't care about this. Well, number one, the crowd was exhausted. They were exhausted. How did you go through four and a half hours of... of five and a half hours in that case of a fucking... This match. felt like a WrestleMania. Actually, you know what? WrestleMania felt shorter. Yeah. Because it actually was. Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> Time-wise, it was actually short. No way. I, I, I don't. No way. That's a what? A 100% a lie. Now, are you talking about the one-night WrestleManias or the two-night WrestleManias? Like, like WrestleManias each night from, like, this last year. There's no way. Yeah, each night was shorter. Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. No. No, I'm not kidding you. No, I'm actually serious. They were shorter than tonight's show was, yeah. Seriously? Yep. Don't add me on that. Yeah. We're, We're going to have to double check on that because that's, that's if, if that's, that's the case, case, we have a much, much bigger problem. problem. Cuz this, this felt like a slog to get through. Oh, it was it was a slog, man. In this match, it's almost it's it's past 10 o'clock. That's true. I want to go bad. But uh yeah, CM Punk won with the GTS. I always say these guys tried and if the show was shorter, we probably would have had a much better time. But they added in, like, matches that didn't have to be in there, like, at all. And it's unfortunate because these two suffered for the length of time. All right, let's just get over with this. Yep. Um, who, so who won this match? And- CM, CM Punk is the new AEW World Champion. Not surprised. He has a limited shelf life. Yep. So, um, Hangman Page was a colossal failure as an AEW World was, Champion. We'll talk about it. We make for us some Yes, here. we will. So, when, when we come, come back, back Pina Gallery, Gallery, what are we talking about? We're going to talk about kind of an interesting little topic, but we'll get to it when we get there. All right. All right. We are back. A peanut of the gallery. Let's make this majestic again, starting with CM Punk and Hangman Page. Number one, before we even get into it. There were too many matches. There were way too many matches in this fucking card. They could have taken out three matches and nobody would have cared. In fact, people would have been happier. There were a lot of people on Twitter really upset of the length of this event. And I think this match, unfortunately, suffered for yeah, that I, length. I, I couldn't enjoy it. I was, I was exhausted, man. I was so... You were, like, tired. You saw so much already. It's almost it's, 11 o'clock, and I just want to have a glass of wine. You have a glass of wine right there, literally sitting right there. But unfortunately, like I said, it would have been a good match. Well, it was a good match. It would have been better if AEW knows how to control their timing. Yeah. WWE, I'll always give them credit. They know what they're doing as a part of timing. Also, putting the belt on Punk was appropriate. It, it had to be at this point, and I like Hangman. I do. Here's the thing. Hangman, Hangman Page is not. He's not moving. Hangman is a, he is in his mid twenties. He's going to be fine, but with the length of the co- or of how long the company's been around, and based on the ratings, they had to do something. And I think putting the title on an established star like Punk is there. Also, CM Punk said that his time in WWE was wasted. Are you fucking kidding me? You would not be the legend that you are without WWE. Like, period. Yeah. End of story. You can bitch me all you want. You know it's true. Yeah. Anyways, that's what we got for this like, one. Like, like booking-wise, it was fine. I liked the rivalry going into it, and the construction of the match was good, but after, like, five fucking hours of wrestling that was hit or miss at best... This was this kind you of. Tell I just want to get this over with. So right. Let's move on. This was excellent. It was I a would, good match. I wouldn't have done anything different. I like the pacing. I like the timing. Um, once again, I feel like it would have been a lot better if it wasn't, you know, eight hours in. Mm-hmm. But overall, I wouldn't have done anything different. I also like the booking of the match. Yeah. Or the booking leading up to the yeah. match too. <sighs> Worst match, <laughs> the, worst match of the night. This match was a shit show. Tell I me. expect it to be a shit show, but my God, I could have done without this fucking bloodbath. The the five minute 
loop theme song was so unnecessary. Everything about this match was unnecessary. This was a terrible match. Bite me. I don't like this it wasn't fucking a, blood shit. I don't either. This is a company that you're supposed to take seriously with stuff yeah, like this. this blood shit. Right. This is not what people want. What is this, ECW circa 1997? And even then, that if company you, if ran you, bingo halls. If you still want blood and guts, fuck you. That's all I have to say. There is an appropriate time. Yeah, there is no appropriate time for blood. No, there is. There is 100% appropriate times within professional wrestling for blood and carnage. This this, this was not, not it. No, this was legitimately a match for the sake of having blood and carnage. Yeah, and that's, and that's not what it's supposed to be. Here's the thing. Blood and carnage should not be the selling point of the match. The match should be so personal... So violent already that blood happens. It should not be expected. It should be surprising. That's, yeah, this was this was well, no, that's that's, that's how you book. That's how you book blood and guts. Yeah, it's like oh, these two people. Like if it was like Jericho and um, uh, Eddie Kingston by themselves in a like like a Texas Death Match, whatever. There's at least something there. Right. They, they got, got personal. They, they got, got there. The rest of these people were not necessary. No. Like, zero point of that was necessary. Like, zero. Oh, this one is weird because here's the thing. The match, I hate the lead up to it. The yep. match itself was great. Perfect. I couldn't have said it better. Like, it was it was that bad. I mean, the the segments were a fucking mess. Every single one. But, but then you get to this match where the expectations were not as great because of how bad the lead-up was. Then you have this awesome match. The only thing I would have done was take Aubrey Edwards out of the match because oh, she was... God, Aubrey Edwards is terrible. Her distraction here was just abhorrent. Abhorrent. It was hard for me to enjoy it because the Aubrey Edwards run around like a fucking head with, or a chicken with his head cut off. And it's like, can you leave them alone and stop doing weird animated shit? You're a referee. You're supposed to be essentially invisible to the audience. And you are running in between spots. You're in the wrong place. And it's so bad. And I do not fault either one of these women for that. It's not their fault. They pulled off a great match overall. Can we skip this one? No. We're going to talk about it. And I'm because I, I want to trash this. Paige Van Zant. Hey, Tony, Tony, my boy. Paige Van Zant is not ready for for not just pay per view, but for television. She was. She sucks. Ty Conti sucks. Period. She's improved from her time in WWE. I'll give you that, but she. <laughs> She's she's so focused on being the Sammy Guevara, um, AEW locker room cum rag that she has she lost. Much is. She's lost the plot. She has. Yeah, no one cares. Sammy anymore. Guevara. Sammy Guevara has lost all interest in me, and I think everybody else. Yeah, why do he, I care? Nobody cares. A, a guy who actually had potential to be per, possibly at least someone that was kind of there is now gone. Nobody cares. Cool. They have. I. I think AEW has ruined Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti. Period. Don't care. I. Do, no. I don't think they're redeemable. I. I just. I, I hope. I hope Frankie Kazarian gets that sink off of them. I hope everybody but these two get. Even Paige Van Zant. It's like she might be green as fucking like morning fucking dew, but at least she's athletic. That's true. But. There's potential with her. She like was not that, ready man, for this there, spot. There's no savings. Ty Conti and Sammy Guevara nope. at this point. See, uh, at least Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page are fantastic, and hopefully Frankie Kazarian can recover. Oh, uh, Frankie Kazarian doesn't need anything. This this would not have been on a pay per view, by the way, at all. This would have no, been no, this would have been on last, Rampage. This is a last minute fucking. Decision. It was stupid. Oh, like like this fucking match. Oh God. Why are we talking about this one too? Kyle O'Reilly is such a great wrestler 
And Kyle I, O'Reilly saved Darby Allen's life like two times during this show. Absolutely. And I think the, the, the fact, fact that Darby, Darby Allen is so popular shocks me. Yeah. He, Darby it, Allen sucks. He sucks. He is not. He, the problem is that he was an amateur wrestler. He knows better. But he keeps doing this. It's like, dude, I swear to God you will be paralyzed by, like, next year if you continue this. Pretty much. He has he, two times. Uh, no, not even two times. Three times during this match. I, there were times where he could have been paralyzed. Like, legitimately, boom, gone. But, you know, Kyle O'Reilly is, is such a master that he just saves like people's lives. So. Right. He did great We're submissions. Roll with it. <sighs> I mean, I guess if you were going to book a Darby Allen match at this show, might as well it be with Kyle O'Reilly, somebody safe. Yeah. At least give him that. <sighs> I don't I'm so what is what is the point of the Owen Hart Foundation tournament other than to promote the Owen Hart Foundation? This comp the Owen Howard Foundation is for scholarships for underprivileged youths, which is great. I don't mind it. But this thing has been around for longer than AEW has threefold. What was the point of this tournament? Well, here's Mike right about this. So Britt Baker won this match. Adam Cole won the other match. Aren't Adam Cole and Britt Baker in a relationship? Why Adam Cole didn't propose right there, I don't know. That would have been a cool moment. I mean, that's that's my thing. It's like, dude, my dude, put a ring on that bitch. Right, like, seriously. That would have been the perfect opportunity to do so. I understand, like... Why was Ruby Soho in this match? Because Ruby Soho sucked. It should have been Chris Sadlander. Mm -hmm. She was more popular. Did you see her shit on Rampage? She was so popular. They had a great match. This match was mediocre. Yeah, Ruby Soho is mediocre at best. Yeah, unfortunately. It's like, oh, wait, why is, why is Rizzo not getting over? Because she's not really that good. No. And that sucks saying. Because no, I like Ruby. Not. I like Ruby Soho. Ah, sure, of course. Her, her whole character is bad as... It's, it's, bad as, it, it's, 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 it's as stale as bread. It's, it's getting old. Yeah. It's, it's getting old. a little old. It's like you're, so you're it's kind about of... It's as stale as a London street. Uh, oh, well, that's really her. Okay, cool. Maybe crank it up to, like, infinity. Maybe right. you'll have something... She seems very reserved. Yeah. And that's the problem. Here's the thing. With Dr. Britt Baker, she cranked up an IRL situation of her being legitimately a dentist to infinity. Exactly. And that's why it works. Right. And that's why she's popular. Right. Ruby Chris, Soho. Ruby Soho's like, oh, what's your what's your goal and purpose? I'm, I'm a punk. Okay, cool. What are you going to do? I'm going to do an eight on the punk. No. Crank that shit up and then break the knob. Then it will work. Right. Because it's really not hard. I do. I did like her entrance. I will say that. Um, Rancid doing the live performance. I thought they did better than the fucking Fozzy guitarist again. Oh, the fo the Fozzy guitarist and the fake shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. About it was that. it was garbage. I don't care about the Fozzy guitarist. At least at least Rancid was good. Uh, she can get over it. Anyways, let's talk about this one. This, this one. one uh, I was so disappointed. Yeah. This could have been so much better. These two were on autopilot. Nobody cared. Like seriously, buried this, that far into the car, nobody cared. If if this is if this is going to be how you paid tribute to Owen Hart with all the matches that you had leading up to this, you might as well bring Owen Hart back up and drop him back down to the just, ring. Just bring him up from the fucking grave at this point because this right. was stupid. I mean, he might as well kill himself. Oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> so here's the thing: like, he'll put himself in a plastic these, this time. These these are these are the <laughs> make the death faster. <laughs> Jesus, these are these are the finals of the Owen Hart Foundation tournament of a tribute to Owen Hart. Way you to guys, go. Owen Hart's looking up from both hell being both alive. both matches are on autopilot. Yep, Owen Hart's looking up from hell being Dax, like, that's Dax, my legacy right there. Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler had such a great match. And that honored him. This did not at all, period. This was a good match. It was all right. Based on the rivalry and everything, I loved this match. Yeah, I just don't care. The ending was the only thing that I had a problem with. Why? Like, 
when was the last time that missed in the face? Uh, here's the thing. Like, Tajiri's a great example. The miss to the face was a distraction right. for a legitimate, let me kick you in the side of the head as hard as I can. That's a finisher. Yeah, no one cared about this. A spray. I, I like this match. I would have done anything different maybe other than the finish. <sighs> the debuts were good. I'll yeah, give, that's about it. I'm going to give the debuts at least a good solid this, thumbs this up. Wasn't, this was not about the actual no, match. No, it was not. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Like, I like both of these women. I do. But at the same time, this was not their best match. Nope. Like, at all. <laughs> but, man, I, I will say at least one thing. I saw within this match a lot of great potential down the road. I'll at least give them that. I'll be nice. This was very lazy. It was. This, this was a lazy match. At least... At least it was safe. It was safe. No, it was 100% safe. It was not a crazy you didn't tell. You can tell there were veterans in that match because they played it pretty safe. Right. right. And the Young Bucks, I will say, they did a good performance overall. I thought um, I thought they led the pace that the Hardys could keep up with. Yeah. Where they did a bunch of good crazy spots in like good clusters. Yeah. That did not lose my interest overall. But at the same time, I've seen... Better from that. Yes. And I think that's kind of where it lost me. It's like, you have this match, and that's all well and good, but we've seen this match. Yep. In a bigger match when the Hardys, who are the Broken Hardys, taking on the Bullet Club Young Bucks in Ladder Wars, yep. a much more significant match, and a much better match overall. Yep. That was a dream match. You have, like, quality. This one... It was good, yeah. but it was just there. Everything here was excellent. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a Haas match. MJF got his ass handed to him. That's all I wanted. A great, a great way to write him off of TV. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if um, you saw on Twitter of the medical professional putting a, um, a nose and face mask. Literally, I'm not kidding you. You can look this up. Over his nose and his eyes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know, I breathe out of my eyes too. What of it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought this was a great way to take MJF off of TV so yeah. they can do their contractual obligation. Wardlow showed so much great character. Yeah, he did. The, like, like the development of Wardlow as a character is just cranked up to a But Wardlow, Wardlow was so comfortable in this. And yeah. he played to this crowd and got them so riled up. Like, he's, he's the next TNT champion. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the next face of the company. <laughs> Give him some time. Yeah. He has the athleticism. He has the look. Like I said, he has, if Scorpio Sky is looking for a new person. Yep, he has, he has the character. He has, Wardlow has, I will say one thing. Like, I even said this to Pina Gallery earlier, that Velveteen Dream had the it factor. I think Wardlow has that it factor. I think he has all the tools to be, possibly, a future um, AEW world champion. Mm -hmm. Give him some time. And they're doing that right. Give him that time to right. really develop. He'll be your face of the company. All right. Easily. So let's move on to the last match. It was a, it was a, it was a fucking... It was... It was a, this... I, I, I hate saying that I liked it, but I did like it. I really did. I thought it was cute. I thought it was cute. I thought it was funny. It was, it was cute and people, funny. People were really into the match. And it made me smile. Um, the contrast of Hook and Danhausen... Donhausen, Blankhausen, it was it was good. I yeah. really liked it. Um, Smart Mark Sterling was really funny, and I thought Tony Nese and Hook were a great contrast of the comedy that kept people invested that this was a wrestling match. Yeah. So I wouldn't have done anything different. So that was it for Double or Nothing Peanut Gallery. Next week is going to be weird. Why is that? Male parental unit is going to be in town, so we will not be doing a show. We will not. I know it's kind of weird because we have two pay-per-views next week. Following week, we got two pay-per-views. 
That following week, we're going to have a marathon oh, yes. of shows. We're going to cover Hell in a Cell. We're going to cover... Um, we're gonna in, your, cover in your house. In your house. We're also, that week, going to also cover uh, Always Ready. And we are also going to be covering Wrestling Don't... No, not Don't Talk You. Um, Dominion. Uh, Dominion. It's going to be a hell of a week. But, oh, yeah. but spending time with male parental unit is way more important. Right. Show. So I hope you understand that no show next week, as far as we know. Now that could change on an instant, depending on what's going on. But we are not planning. On doing uh, don't a show do next do week. do not expect a show next week. Expect a marathon show the week after. Mm-hmm. So if you did enjoy this video for the length of it, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, become a patron. All the links are going to be in the QR code right next to moi. And as always, be majestic.